guess what time it is Everyone, you guessed it, it's Mr. Goldie time What I'm going to be showing you today is how to make your ultra thin MSI GF6510 SDR laptop, gaming laptop, how to stop it from overheating because it's just annoying when it's overheating and it starts to stutter and thermal throttle. This actually works. And not only will it work on this particular laptop, it will work on a lot of ultra thin gaming notebooks. The things that I have bought to remedy this problem, I have put a list of the things in the video description in this video. So please click on it and get these supplies. I'm, we must take apart the laptop. So if you haven't already broken your factory seal, you definitely need to break this little sticker and underneath of it's gonna be the last screw. And you wanna get all of these screws out. Once you get all of the screws out, make sure you put the screws somewhere that you're not going to lose them. Now this laptop has been taken apart before, but what you want to do is you get up here, you get up here by the, the hinge, and you use it like a plastic spudger. You just go along the edges and you just pop it up. Then once you have a hold of that, if all the screws are out, you can just pop this lid right off. Now the first thing you wanna do when you get this laptop apart is disconnect the battery. Last thing you wanna do is for this battery to let the laptop uh, power on. So you just take a plastic spudger, like I'm gonna do. You come over here. And you wanna disconnect the battery and just lay that to the side. Where these fans are, there's gonna be these little plug-ins here. Now you wanna be gentle and just wiggle it back and forth until it unplugs, just like that. You're gonna do that on this side. So there's gonna be two plug plugs that you unplug. Be gentle. And then there's this third one here. There is a plastic retainer clip that you can just pull it up. Always use plastic because it doesn't conduct electricity. You don't need to um, pull it very hard and then it just pulls right on out. And what I'm gonna do next is start taking out the screws. You see there's one, two, three screws around each fan. So I'm gonna, the other one over here is almost hidden away a little bit behind this um, ribbon cable. So that's a total of six screws. I'm gonna go ahead and take all of them out. Now there's gonna be seven screws that need to be removed. And these seven screws, there's gonna be four here that's over the GPU. One, two, three, four, there's three over the CPU, one, two, and back here by the cable again is number three. And then I'm going to lift up on this whole piece right here. Now, don't press too hard where you can break the motherboard. Again, I'm just using a Phillips screwdriver. And 
Now, this will be ready to come up. Now, a lot of times, heat has mated these uh, thermal compounds together. A lot of people will say wiggle and pull up on this whole housing. You can do that. And then if that's not working, you can take like a plastic spudger and put it in between the motherboard and the copper pipes and you can gently pry up. And then you can also do a little bit of the wiggling and that will work. Now, as you pull up, it may get caught on this little cable that's been in your way the whole time, but you can maneuver that little cable out of the way, just like that. Then the heat sinking fans are now off. I'm gonna clean the thermal grease off of the heat sinks. And what I'm doing, I'm using is isoprol alcohol. Now, a lot of people won't use anything at all or they won't use the alcohol, but it's okay to use this alcohol because not only does it do a good job cleaning, it evaporates pretty quickly too after you clean. And it also breaks down thermal compound and it really gives a good, good result, see? And also, Another thing when you're doing this, the thermal compound that you're cleaning up may already be crusty and dried up. And if it is, you just take a plastic spudger and you just push it like this. You wanna get this surface as smooth as possible. Because believe it or not, if you were to put this underneath a microscope, you would see many pits and ridges and a lot of a rough surface so you wanna get this clean as possible. You will see these um, tiny black screws on the top of this metal um, shield of the fans. You're gonna to wanna to take those off. You're gonna to wanna to unscrew these and take them off. This is a smaller Phillips bit. You wanna do the same thing over here on this fan. And this is, um, I would call this the side of the GPU. Once the screws are out, you turn it over on this side and these fans come right off. See, just like that, these fans come right off. Over here, this one's gonna just come right up. Has a little bit of tape on this side. Just gonna push up a little bit. Has tape on both sides. As you can see, what I want to show you is sometimes when you use the compressed air, it doesn't get this out right here. And this is preventing the fan from cooling the best when it goes to push out the air and even pull air in. See all of this up here and over here and all this hair and everything. Those are causing um, airflow restrictions and we're gonna need to fix that. I'm gonna just clean that out. I'm gonna blow that out with some compressed air and then I'm gonna clean it with Q-tips and isopro alcohol. the time if you had a bad fan you'd want to replace it and also check to see that it spins freely in this case my fans have not been making any abnormal noise they have been doing fine so I'm just going to clean them I'm going to clean down into the blades and get all the dust everything out of there. Remember, we've already used compressed air and we have blown out all of the heat sinks 
and made sure there is no lint or hair or any debris blocking the heat sink chambers. You'll see that there's tape on both sides of this heat sink and it's gonna just fit on just like this. And you'll wanna reuse that tape that's on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this over, make sure it lines up with these little tiny screws. Take these little tiny black screws and you start putting back on. Don't tighten it down too tight yet. Putting these on caddy corner. That way this is gonna go on even. It's firm. And then it's on there over to this side. It doesn't have any built on tape for this. It's gonna line up like so. So you can see them line up. And you're just gonna take those three black screws and start tightening that down. And then once it's back together and on there, voila. Now what I'm gonna show you is I bought, I bought these thermal pads. Now, these thermal pads are different thickness and that's exactly what I needed for this laptop. I will give you a link to where you can buy your own in the description box. As you can see, these are different thicknesses. There's a 0 0.5 millimeter, one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, and two millimeter. Now what you have to do as you replace these thermal pads, you're gonna to wanna to see how thick each of them are on your laptop. Because if it's not thick enough, the heat sink might not be touching. For instance, it's not thick enough, it's gotta to touch both for the heat to be transferred. If it's just touching one side and not this side, then the heat is not being conducted and it's going to overheat. You want to make sure that they're touching each other, that that heat is being conducted to the thermal pads onto the heat sink. You want to get your GPU and your CPU as clean as possible. You're going to want to look at the thickness of these thermal pads and try to compare them to the ones that you have and you can cut them out with scissors or an exacto knife so i'm going to replace them as best as i can because some of these aren't original start from the top this one on the top right here on these two This thickness is 1.5 millimeters. So I'm going to put this over top of this and I'm going to cut it out with scissors. This one that goes behind it, I'm going to pair it up. 
I just put this one on and you're putting these on, you will see on each side, this is a double-sided adhesive. You need to take the plastic off of each side to expose the sticky. If not, then it will not conduct. If you forget to remove the plastic, then the thermal pads will not be able to conduct the heat through to the metal of the heat sink, which will cause it to overheat. That will be bad. These, uh, these pads right here in the back were two millimeters. This is two millimeters. This one right here was 1.5. This was two millimeters. This was 1.5. This was two millimeters. This one was 1.5. These were two millimeters. Again, if you need the specifics, you can pause the video. It's time for me to put the thermal grease onto the GPU and CPU. And boy, did I, I got the best. Thermal Grizzly. And I will give you a link to that in the video description. Don't forget to check it out. What I'm doing here next is I'm putting the Thermal Grizzly Thermal Grease on the die of the GPU and the processor. And then you will actually want to smooth it out with the plastic spatula. Then you put the heat sink on there and you press down. And I lift it up so I can look to see if it's making contact with the heat sink. And you want to make sure that it's making contact with the heat sink, that it has thermal grease on the die of the GPU and CPU and also on the heat sink. And if it's to your satisfaction, if you can see thermal grease on both surfaces, Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to feed it along the side of the fan and there's a place for it to clip under and over and down into the motherboard where you plug it in gently and then you push down that plastic retainer clip and then that clips it into place. Pretty easy, pretty simple. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting the screws into the fans. I'm going to start over here on the left and there will be three black Phillips screws. Over here to the right fan and I'm going to start putting those three in. Remember this one is kind of close to that cable but it should be visible now and it should be no problem putting back on and this is very important these little tiny plugs that come from the CPU fan and the GPU fans make sure they are plugged in you push them into the board plug them in and make sure that the wires are out of the way now next I'm going to start putting the screws into actually over the CPU first and these are going to have numbers they start out like seven eight nine well I actually put them in in that order uh, because it kind of lets the metallic surface mate with the die on the CPU and the thermal grease and the heat sink smoother if you tighten them down in that order believe it or not it does so you will just want to tighten them according to the numbers you know you start out with the lowest numbers like seven eight nine now over here I'm tightening it down on the GPU it's starting down at the bottom left corner 
And I believe the next one labeled incorrect number is in the upper right. It's like diagonally or caddy corner, however you want to say it. And that pulls the metal surface down more evenly. It doesn't have to be that tight at all. And then I'm just going to go over them to make sure that, you know, they are tight. And indeed they are. You know, they are in place. The thermal pads are in place. The heat sinks are in place. The fans are in place. They've been totally cleaned at this point. And I'm kind of getting excited and anxious to fire this thing up to see what the difference in the thermal temperatures are going to be. Was all this job worth it in the end? We shall find out. We will see. Also, do not forget to plug in your laptop battery. It's right there in the right corner below the CPU fan. Another thing you may want to do is to go around and push on the metal to make sure the metal is kind of broken in to the thermal pads. And then you're all good. But make sure that that battery is plugged in to your laptop before putting the bottom case back on or you'll have to take it back off and replug in your laptop battery okay and then you're just gonna put your case back on lastly but not least this is very important these metal laptop stands are wonderful when it comes to reducing the thermals in your laptop these little feet uh, come with four stickers they come with a sticker in case you put them on wrong and you need to put them on again so they give you one time for each foot to get it wrong and you'll have an extra sticker but the point and idea is to get it right the first time right so before I even take the stickers off I kind of you know eyeball where I want each leg to go and then I just simply take off the sticker and then I attach it and kind of push it onto the laptop to make sure that it's on there really good. These feel like a premium quality legs. These are metal. I have put them on a lot of laptops and they work really great. They feel like a premium product and they allow the laptop to stand up and for air to be suctioned underneath of it and for it to blow the hot air out the back so it just allows for better ventilation overall and these aren't very expensive again I will include a link to purchase these in the video description this is the GF 6510 SDR laptop it has the 10th generation i7 processor and those are well known to run hot you see before the CPU under a load was clocking in at 96 degrees Celsius and now it's at 65 the GPU was clocking in at 98 and now the highest it has reached is 77 so it has helped out tremendously on playing games and also not thermal throttling. And then lastly, you will want to clean your laptop every couple of months, depending on the environment that you're in. If you're in a dusty environment, you may need to clean it sooner because these ultra thin laptops can collect dust easy and in the ventilation, it'll stop up and it'll overheat. As you can see here, the legs of the laptop are off of the ground and it helps with ventilation, air going under through there, air going under there and then back out. Definitely suggest it. So I'm gonna get this into a game and see what the thermals are reading. 
not really going to play. I'm just, this is for testing purposes. And we are in game now. And I have it set to 60 frames. And we're going to see what the thermals are. Everything appears to be much more responsive. So the game that used to send this laptop into 95 degrees area, the processor used to be 95. It is at 68. And the GPU is steady at 77. These both used to run in the 90s. That's just an amazing difference. So I definitely recommend for everyone to do this thermal maintenance that I've done in this video. I think you will see a world of a difference. And remember to also keep your laptop elevated. I also suggest putting those laptop legs that I installed in the video on and to let the laptop be held upright. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you with your laptop. Until the next video, have a good day.